Welcome, Gordon Mann, here at the South Point Casino Resort, joined by Chuck McBreen of the Ramapo Roadrunners. Roadrunners 2-0, game number 100 overall of the D3Hoops.com Classic, won by Ramapo, fittingly enough. And Coach, uh, remark before we got on the air here, you had to feel pretty good about that emotional win yesterday over Salisbury. Didn't look like you had any issues with complacency coming out against the team with kind of a reverse of the record here with Gustavus Adolphus. Yeah, I was really worried about today because I knew how good they were and I thought that we really focused on being able to beat Salisbury and I didn't want our guys to become complacent. You know, with the victory yesterday, I thought they might have a let up, but uh, you know, we got a lead. We didn't put them away. We had chances to really separate. We let them hang around within striking distance, but the game never really got under double figures in the second half. And talk about two of your seniors. We talked during the broadcast about you have a nicely balanced roster. You have Jermaine Pert, who's a senior, but two guys played really impressively throughout the uh, weekend here. Sultan Aminu, he in particular, he came out in the second half, looked very aggressive in terms of taking the ball to the rim. Something you said to him at the half? Well, I told Sultan and all. He transferred into us from East Stroudsburg. He's a Division II player. And at the end of the day, I thought that he could give us more. And I told him to come out and be aggressive, look to get his around the bucket. And we wanted to get him the ball. And he ended up getting on a foul line eight times in the second half and converting seven of them. He's a good free throw shooter, too, which was, which was big because it was an area you struggled in this weekend. We struggled yesterday. We're not that bad. Coming out here, we were 70. You know, I would prefer to be around 74 or 75, but I I'll settle for 70. But yesterday, we shot it under 50%, and then we came out in the first half, and we won the 50% again at 4 for 10. But then in the second half, we go out and go 19 for 23 and shoot 82.5% in the second half. So that's hopefully a sign of things to come in the rest of the second half of the season. And the other senior, Thomas Bonicum, not a big surprise that he's going to be on the all-tournament all team here. Talk about what he brings to your roster. Tommy's our, you know, probably our best all-around player. He's got the highest basketball IQ on our team, and, and he can go inside and out, shoot the three. He can go around the basket. It really creates mismatches for teams with Sultan down there and Tommy, and that's what we did at the end of this game to close it out. We just went, went to a, a three-out, two-in, and pounded the ball inside to Tommy. He started slow today, but he really finished strong at the end of the game. Yeah, Gustavus yesterday, they, their entire offense was inside. Everything shot they took against Eau Claire in the first half, at least, was all like eight feet in. Today, they didn't even seem to try. What did you do to, to basically shut out their two big men? Well, we tried to play great post defense to keep the ball out of the post, and we talked about forcing them into jumpers that were contested. And I thought we did a decent job. A few times we lost number 21. He got some open looks and all. But on the most part, we want to win the points in the paint. That's what we do. We want to get the ball inside and win the points in the paint. And yesterday we won at 42-16. I didn't take a look today, but I would imagine the that we won the significantly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you come out of this 2-0. and You've made this trip several times. What do you see from this team? How does it compare to the last couple? I know it's been a couple years since you've won the conference tournament, but you know, compare this team to me to the one who last won the conference in 2013. In 2013, we had a real good start in five, but we weren't as deep as this team. I, I think the start in five of that team was better than this team, okay. but on an overall with the depth, you know, someone asked me a question yesterday, how do I compare this to the two teams that made the final eight run in 2003, and then in 2005, right. we went to the Sweet 16, and I said, and Charles exactly, and, yeah. I think what we have compared to them is the depth. Right. We might not be as good as start in five, one of the things that they had that was really significant on that team, Tennyson Witter led the country in assists and steals. So, I mean, he, he was a difference maker at the point. When people ask me, you know, when they say, oh, who's the best point guard or whatever you see, he's the one that always comes to mind, believe it or not. I know he's you know not on some of the lists, but he was such an exceptional athlete. I guess just as a personal issue, do you know where he is nowadays, what he's doing? Yeah, I speak to Tennyson every week. I helped get him a state trooper job in New Jersey. Oh, he's a so he's a state trooper in New okay. Jersey. He's got a wife and two kids. Uh, I have a great relationship with him. He's been to two of our games this year. When he comes, I ask him to talk to our point guards and all. I mean, I just have like a father-son relationship with Tennyson with it, and I absolutely love him, and I know he loves me. And, and you know, those guys, I stay in touch with Truck Ranson. He's a 2,000-point right. scorer for us. He's battling cancer right now. He's being inducted into the Rampo College Hall of Fame in April, so I'm hoping that he gets well. You know, I've been at the hospital. I've been with him regularly, and, and, and he seems to be doing good, and I think the prognosis is pretty good. Coach, you, you know, you've been here. This is your sixth time in seven years. Uh, we love having you here, but tell us why you keep coming back. 
I'll tell you what, you guys do a phenomenal job with all the things you do for Division Three basketball and, and, and all the extra coverage that we get. And, and I actually love coming out here. I love the opportunity to play against real good opponents like Salisbury. Three years ago when we came out here undefeated, we played North Central, they were number one in the country. I enjoy that, you know. We get to really see how good we are. I know, on a whole, the NJAC has come up short in the NCAAs. So as a result of only Stockton really showing itself in the last 10 years, we don't get the credit and we that we say we deserve, but you got to earn it. Right. And if we're not going to win tournament games, then at the end of the day, we're not going to get that credit. So I told our guys to come out here in front of everybody, show them how good we are. Right. And if we do that, we'll get the credit that we deserve. So it's, it's a matter of earning it. And hopefully we can continue, get back in the tournament this year and then make a run like 2003 and 2005. Right. Right. Well, those are great teams. I, I remember I covered that run all the way through to Worcester, and that still is... I know that game didn't go your way, but that was one of the best games, best atmosphere, and again, just the level of play in that game was phenomenal. Tough place to play. They, yeah. they probably might have the best home crowd and the loudest, and, game and the loudest in Division yeah. Three college basketball, and Steve does an amazing job there. So, you know, we played right down to the wire. We lost by two, but that was a great game. You know, I, I still look back on it as my opportunity to get to the Final Four. But we came up short. Maybe this will be the year. Well, I'm going to have a little fun with you here. I know you follow the poll. You came in. You were unbeaten but unranked. You've now won two games. You beat Salisbury. Where should you be ranked when the poll comes out on Monday? I don't know. I would say, in my opinion, after beating Salisbury and then beating Virginia Wesleyan, who was ranked, and beating Newport, who was in the Final Four last year, I would think we're a top 15 team right now. You know, that's where I think we should be, somewhere in the top 15. But that's not up to me to decide. That's up for you guys to decide. And all we can do is just take care of the next opponent. The only thing on our mind now, we go home, we have a conference game on the 4th that we have to get ready for, and that's what we're going to set our sights on, on Camden. Well, he's Chuck McBreen, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that he's from the top 25 ranked uh, Ramapo College Roadrunners. We'll know when exactly when the poll is released next Monday. Congratulations, Coach. We'll be back with more from the South Point Casino and Resort in just a bit.